foremost, I would like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Rekar Kedash, double honor to the elders of GMS, who I learned this truth from. I would like to give a salutation to all the Akim out there that's preaching this word in righteous and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Also a shalom to the Israelite foreigners out there, the speckled bird who's going to come looking like other nations, but who are Israelites. Shalom, man. Just ran across this article right here. And this is from NBC News and it states debt ceiling default would be potentially catastrophic warns J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Demian. OK, so, hey, man, we're here, man. OK, so you have behind the scenes, you have the international bankers, man, pushing everything forward into this cashless society, man. OK, everything is everything in society is digital now, man. OK. And this is why we're here, man, because keep in mind, man. All of the stock markets are intertwined with one another, man. Okay. The American stock market, the Europe stock market, and the China stock market. Okay. They are all intertwined with one another. So if one market flutters, the other two shall do the same, man. Okay. Because all roads lead to what? Caragba, man. Okay. Because the elites, the Rothschilds, they're setting up their new world order, man. Okay? This is what we are entering, man. We're in right now, man. And this debt ceiling is a key indicator. Because once again, man, I think the deadline is October the 18th. Whether they finally raise the debt ceiling by borrowing more money from the Fed, okay? Or... If it collapsed, nevertheless, man, this is coming sooner than later. All right. So let's get into this article, man. All right. JP Morgan Chase has begun preparing for the possibility of the United States hitting its debt limit. Chief Executive Jamie Demian told Rutgers on Tuesday adding he nevertheless expected policymakers to find a solution to avoid that potentially catastrophic event. The country's largest lender has begun scenario planning how a potential U.S. credit default would affect the repo and money markets, client contractors, its capital ratios, and how rating agencies would react, Demian said in an interview. Because once again, man, all the stock markets are intertwined with one another, man. And see, the so-called dollar used to be the world's reserve currency. This is not the case no more. Because what? This digital currency is coming into play, man. Okay, every nation is what? Launching their own digital currency, man. And the debt that they had in the United States is flooding back into America, man. Okay? Which is making the money worthless. This is why you're seeing when you go into the grocery store, items are going up. This is called inflation, man. All right? But nevertheless, this is all Bible prophecy, man. Okay? Let's continue on, man. All right? This is like the third time we have had to do this. It is a potential, potentially catastrophic event, he said. Every single time this comes up, it gets fixed. But we should never even get this close. I just think this whole thing is mistaken. And one day we should just have a bipartisan bill and get rid of the debt ceiling. It's all politics. He added, absolutely it's all politics because the so-called Republicans and Democrats, man, they're on the same team. It's only when the cameras come cut on that they look like they are opposition. 
But look, that's only for the cameras, man. Behind closed doors and when the cameras cut off, hey, listen, man, they are making mockery of the people, man, okay, of the American citizens, all right? Let's read a little bit more of this, man. Congressional Democrats are scrambling to find a way to raise the government's $28.4 trillion borrowing cap before the Treasury Department runs out of ways to service the nation's debt. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said the Treasury will likely exhaust extraordinary measures by October the 18th because that's the deadline. Now, let's go back to this number, man. $28.4 trillion. The United States... The corporation of the United States, because America is not a country, it's a corporation. The corporation of the United States is $28.4 trillion in debt to who? The international bankers, man, better known as the Rothschilds, man. So if they if America defaults, right? What happens, man? Well, the only other commodity they have is his citizens, man. And this is why everybody has a birth certificate, man. All right? Because your birth certificate makes you a contractual slave, man. All right? Contrary to popular belief, man. All right? And if you don't believe me, soon you will. Let's continue reading, man. Democrats had hoped to avoid partial government shutdown and to suspend the federal debt ceiling with a single vote. But they were blocked on Monday in the Senate by Republicans who said the two matters should be dealt with separately. Okay. More theatrics, right? More politics as usual, right? Fischel brinksmanship has become a regular feature of U.S. politics over the past decade, thanks to the ongoing partisan polarization with debt ceiling deals coming down to the wire in 2011 and 2017, man. Okay? So, nevertheless, man, we here, man. So, this is why, if you notice, at the ports here in domestic America and also internationally, man, you have these container ships bagged up, man. Okay. So these container ships, these cargo ships cannot bring in their goods, man, to be imported. Okay. Here, here into America, man. All right. And you have to look no further than what? Long Beach, California and Los Angeles, California. There are what cargo ships as far as the eye can see, man, out there in the Pacific Ocean, man. Okay, so this is why when you go into the grocery store, okay, you start to see a lack of goods everywhere through all sectors. So this is bringing in inflation, man. Okay, which is driving this debt ceiling as well. All right, but let's take it to the scriptures, man. This is Matthew. Chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust do corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, man. That's right, man. Because it's all vanity, man. Because the true riches is these scriptures, man. And for you Israelites, man, the true riches for you is to what? Is to repent and come back to your how above shim your how shot, man. And I'm talking to you Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Seminole Indians, man, as well as you Israelite foreigners, man. Okay? Because what? Everything in this world is vanity, man, including the money, man, okay? It's going to fade away, man, all right? Now, 
Let's go to John, 1 John, that is, chapter 2, all right, verse 15 to 17. 1 John, chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, man, all right, because it's all vanity, man, all right, love not this world, man, all right. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but, but is of the world. And the world passes away. And the lust thereof, but he doeth the will of God abide forever. And that's the key, man. Okay. And that's for you Israelites, man. Coming back and doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. Okay. That's forever, man. That's forever riches, man. Okay. That's how you safe from judgment, man. Ultimately, right? All right. Let's get the book of Ezekiel, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19, man. Because you rich, man, who's causing this? And I'm talking to you so-called elite bankers and you elites as a whole, man. You Rothschilds, Rockefellers, DuPonts, Gettys, J.P. Morgan, all right, Armahammers, okay, Soros. Hey, listen, man, y'all going into slavery, man. Okay, because listen, your grandmaster plan is going to blow up in your face, man, because you're being used by Yahweh Bush Shim Yahweh Shah on the left hand side, man. You have no power, man. You're nothing more than a tool, just like the rest of us. But us, hopeful elect, we are tools on the right hand side. You are tools on the left hand side, better known as the wicked. This is Ezekiel. Chapter 7, verse 19. They shall cast their silver in the street, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of wrath. Right? The Lord, they shall not satisfy their souls, neither fear their bowels, because it is stumbling blocks of their iniquity, man. That's it, man. Your gold and silver is a stumbling block, man, for your iniquity, man. It testifies against you, man, because how did you get your gold and silver, man? How did you get your wealth, man? By deceit, man. Because listen, man, you can't buy your way out of judgment, man, okay? I don't care if you're wealthy or poor. Wrath of the Lord still will come upon you, man, and you elites getting ready to see this firsthand, man, all right? Especially you elites, man. Okay. Let's go to the book of James, man. All right. Because you're responsible for all the hell on this earth, man. Okay. Because you're the wicked, man. You are the wicked, man. But nevertheless, man, you're nothing but a tool, man. You have no power. Okay. Let's go to the book of James, man. This is James chapter 5. And we're going to start at... Verse one, I'm um, verse one, and we're gonna read the six, man. Okay, because you rich man, y'all get ready to pay, man. Okay, because all the murdering, all the stealing, all the fraud you have done, man. Did you think you was gonna get away with this, man? Hey, man, you sadly mistaken, man. But see, Yahweh Bushim Yahushai got in y'all mind, man, that y'all gonna be able to overcome. Yahweh Bushim, Yahweh Shah, man. He got y'all in a trick bag, man. Okay. Your time is limited. This is James chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. Go to now, ye rich man. Weep and howl for your misery that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupt and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh 
as if it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last day. See, we know all about that, man. We know all about that, man, through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Shah. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which of your kept back by fraud, cry up and the cries them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived pleasurably on the earth and been one time. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doeth not resist you. So, hey, man, payback time, man. Did you think you was going to get away with all this wickedness, man? Okay. Let's go to the Apocrypha, man. And this is Sirach chapter 10, verse 8, Ecclesiasticus. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Let me read that again, man. Okay. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. There you have it, man. Because Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of the world that followed, man. All right. And that's a beautiful thing, man. Okay. It's your turn to get judged, man. It's your turn to be oppressed, man. And through our glorious king, Yahweh Shah, man, he's getting ready to do this to you, man. You're finished, man. Okay, enjoy the last seconds of your queendom. It's not, this is not even a kingdom. This is a queendom, man. Okay, let's go to Proverbs, man. This is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 4, man. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. But righteousness delivered from death. Let's read that again, shall we? Riches profit not in the day of wrath, man. Hey, man, you can't buy your way out of this one, man. Your money no good here, man. With your high wish and your high Your money no good here. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death, man. There you have it, man. All right. Let's go to the book of Job, man. Because once again, man. In your wicked minds, man, I'm talking to you Rothschilds, you Rockefellers, man, you Gettys, you Soros, you Gates, J.P. Morgan, you know what I mean, Oppenheimers. You really think, man, that you're going to little uh technical difficulty, but hey, man, the show must go on, man. But you Rothschilds, you Rockefellers, you Gettys, you DuPonts, you think you're going to be able to uh, skate off, man, in the sunset, man. You really think you're going to get away, man. Hey, man, you ain't getting away, man. This is the book of Job, chapter 20, verse 15 and 19. He has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. Let's read that again, man. Talking to you Rothschilds, you Rockefellers, man, you elites, man. He has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them up out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of the apse. The viper tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers of the flood, the brooks of honey and butter. That which he labored for shall he restore. You're going to give that back with interest, man. Okay, starting with Yahweh Shah and the whole nation of Israel, man. Starting with the elect. And shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be. And he shall not rejoice therein, because he have oppressed and forsaken the poor, because he have violently taken away a house which he built it rot. Okay? Built it not, Salakia. Now let's jump down to 22 to 24. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bolt of steel shall strike him though. Hey man, and what is that uh what is that uh iron weapon, man? That's those intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. You're finished, man. 
But hey, man, you at least, you're going to survive that, dude, man. You're going to be the first crops of slaves, man, to build up our kingdom, man. The kingdom of Yashallah, man. Okay. Now, let's keep it going, man. Let's go. Uh, let's take it to the book of Psalms, man. This is Psalms chapter 144. All right. Psalms 144. And I'm going to start at. I'm gonna start at verse. Uh, I'm gonna start at verse four, and I'm gonna read to eleven. Man is like to vanity; his days are as a shadow that passes away. Bow thou heavens, O Lord, and come down and touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. And the mountains talking about these governments, man, that rule over top of us, man. You know, starting off with you elites, man. Okay, and you so-called uh, Illuminati. Okay. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot thy arrows and destroy them. Them arrows going to be those intercontinental ballistic missiles. Also, those laser beams of the chariots, man. Send thy hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children. Talking about you uh, Edomites, man, you elites, man. Whose mouth speak vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. There you have it, man. Falsehood. You got to pay for that, man. Okay. And I'm going to jump to verse 11, man. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speak vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. There you have it, man. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, man. And this is for you Israelites, man, that trust in Babylon, man. Okay. Because you just seen what I just read. What J.P. Morgan is talking about, right? J.P. Morgan and Chase, man. But you still trust in Babylon, man. Hey, man. You sadly mistaken, man. And you're going to die with Babylon. You two-thirds of you Israelites, man. Two-thirds of you Negroes, Latinos, Native American, Indian, similar Indians, man. Because y'all suffer from Stockholm Syndrome, man. Y'all mind are compromised. Y'all are polluted. Because y'all love this place, man. The hell with America, man. This is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1 and 3. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not acts at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of the Pharaoh. The modern day Pharaoh is you elites, man, you Edomites, man, okay? And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. That's another name for America as well as Egypt, man. America go by many names, man. Egypt, the daughter of Babylon, okay, the ancient Roman Empire, okay, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, and many more. Therefore, shall the strength of the Pharaoh shall be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. Because two-thirds of you Israelites, man, you don't know what the hell is going on, man. So when this happens, man, okay, when this default, on the debt ceiling eventually happens, man. You're going to be lost, man, because you never seen this day coming, man. Even though, man, the Lord has set up his prophets, starting with the elders and apostles of GMS, on down to the brothers that preach the likewise doctrine to give you fair warning. But you're not taking heed. This is Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up. The great prince was standing for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Written in what book, man? The Bible, the book of life, man, the elect, man. A time of trouble as never before, man. We're here, man. This is the time that we're in, man. Hey, man, you Negroes, Latinos, Native American, Indians, Central Indians, man. Repent, man, before it's too late, man. Because the doors of salvation are steadily closing, man. This is the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 51, verse 7 and 9. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Talking about America. That made all the earth drunken. And the nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Right, because the nations are found out that America is nothing but a liar, man. And what's the wine that they drunk of America? Is that talking about natural wine? Absolutely not. It's talking about America philosophies. It's democracies, man. Okay. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. 
howl for her, okay? Take balm for a pain. If so, be she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let everyone go into his own country. For her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies, man. Yes, yeah, right, man. It's over for America, man, because your wickedness has reached heaven, man, okay? And the Lord is tired of it, man. No more, man. All right? America will be destroyed in one hour too, man. That's prophecy as well. And let me get that. This is Revelation chapter 18, verse 6 to 8. Reward, that's like here. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she have filled to her double, how she have gloriously Salakia, how she have glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she have said in her heart, I said a queen, I'm no widow and shall see no sorrow. This is why I call the miracles a queendom. It's not even a kingdom, it's a queendom. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her, man. Okay, and I'm going to jump down to verse 10, man. Standing afar off for the fear of torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. It's going to only take one hour to destroy America, man. From New York to California, from Montana to Texas, man, it's finished, man. Okay, that's the that's the future for America, man. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. Let's go to Revelation chapter three, verse ten, man. Because we're entering into the hour of temptation, man. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try to that dwell upon the earth. Now, what is the hour of temptation? It leads to karagma. All roads lead to karagma. This whole article, what I just read from what? NBC News is basically talking about karagma at the end of the day, man. You know, don't be fooled, man. Okay. Now, and I'm going to end it right here, man. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 to 18. And he calls all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 scores and six. There you have it, man. I hope this lesson was edifying. I hope those who come across it receive some type of edification. But until next time, all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Rakaka Dot, Shalom, family.